So, we all need love and appreciation, and it's up to us to make that happen. Now, so I basically did my uh, volunteering at Easter Seals, which is a uh, nonprofit organization which helps out uh, people with special education or disabilities. It helps them get accustomed to, you know, life or, and it's from all ages, uh, all ages too. Yeah, little kids to adults and even elders. So uh, what they do is basically go in, you know, they bring, them, well, they bring them in actually. We sit down, we talk to them. It's like kind of like a school almost. And that's basically what we do. And I think this is relevant because if you didn't know, there's actually a growing population of special needs people. Um, it went up from 12 million to 14 million in the past, I mean, this present decade. So that's why I think this is relevant. And my, for credit, credibility uh, sakes, my entire family uh, have all been sort of like in the special needs you know, environment, mostly as teachers. And I have been like in and out of schools and stuff for that reason. So, and on top of my, the, Volunteering. Today I'm going to talk, talk to you and tell you about my experience at Easter Seals and how it made me and the people I worked with happier, which is including all the students and everybody I worked with. First, I'm going to tell you about my service and what I did. Then I'm going to tell you about the communication principles and the concepts that connected it. And then I'm going to tell you about how I think it can be implemented for just not with me, but for everybody else who's listening in the real world. So let's get started. I completed, like I said, I completed my service at uh, Easter Seals, and uh, I can run through some of the things that we basically did. Um, for one thing, I started with a group of people, a group of students, I'll just call them students, because that's what they are. A group of students, and they ranged, the youngest one I had was eight, and the eldest, or the oldest one was 19, 18 and 19. And uh, it started through with just talking about their feelings, you know, we did little activities and games, did a lot of charades and stuff. They like charades. I was good at that. And um, I lost though. So <laughs> we did <laughs> did a lot of stuff like that. And that's um that's how the majority of it was went. And then we got into a little deeper stuff, which I'll get to in a little bit. But um before I continue, I want to also talk about the mission statement, Easter Seals mission statement, which is according to EasterSeals.com, is to change the way the world views and defines disabilities and uh, making people's lives better every day by establishing profound and positive differences in their lives. And that also plays into why my family likes to do it. They have done it so much because growing up, they were always around people like that. And then as we all know, like they sometimes get made fun of, not you know, listened to, kind of overlooked, you know? So that's another reason why I agree with their um, mission statement. And ways I helped out or how I supported the mission statement and what I did was I made people feel comfortable. I made sure I listened and I was respectful to them. I took my time and everything they said, I made sure I listened to them correctly and to a good extent. Uh, I helped them with their classes and their skills, you know, as some of them have impairments such as speaking or writing. I made sure I helped them with as much time as I had. I didn't have too much time, but in the time I did have, I think I did pretty good with that. And I also um, had the group discussion. When we sat there, we had uh, little discussions about things they've been through, things they would like to go through, actually. A lot of them were very profound on having like certain dreams they have, like mountain climbing and stuff, which was, I thought was pretty cool. Um, uh, another mission statement was something with developmental skills, speech, language, physical, and op occupational therapy, which I didn't get too much to the therapy part, but that, I still think that was so, moving on to the next point is about the communication principles and the concepts and how they all tie in together. So, empathetic listening, I think, is one of the biggest <coughs> ones. Because like I said earlier, people tend to kind of overlook them or you know, not pay as much attention to them. A lot of these people who are basically just like us, they have a lot of built-up emotions and stuff that they would like to talk about, and they can't necessarily just put them in a Or they either have trouble explaining it, some of them might be deaf, you know, might have to do it a certain way. So we, uh, what we did, what we had these kind of long group discussions, about six of us at a time, and we listened, put in input, you know, the other students did as well, and some of them didn't even know this about their other, or their fellow peers. So I think it was good for that as well. So now they know each other better. And I did as well. So that's good. And you know, basically what empathetic listening is, 
To understand another person's form, frame of reference, which is basically like their emotion and where they come from. Because I personally, I you know, I don't have like a disability like that per se. So it was like I couldn't like be sympathetic for them, but I could be empathetic because on an emotional standpoint, I could look at someone on a certain point. Okay. Another communication principle is uh, communication is a process, which also goes through me trying to take my time, go through the ropes, you know, let them make sure to get everything out because a lot of them also aren't used to speaking about their feelings because they're so used to being shut down or just cast away or nobody listening to them. So it's really a good process. It can be long sometimes depending on what it is, but in the end it's worth it for me and them because we all understand each other to some degree. Another ethical uh, or a ethical implication is care and grace. I chose that because meeting the need, it means meeting the needs of people we interact with. And like I said, a lot of this comes from their emotional or their disability. They would like to speak about that a lot. Or some of them aren't necessarily aware of it, like to the extent that we are, if you get what I'm saying. So I think the care and grace with that, you know, helping them through the stuff and uh, stuff like that, I think that's good. Uh, three more, okay. And based on my service experience, this is May 4 3, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to May 4 3 for all, so on and so forth. Based on my <laughs> service experience, I can use communication and ethical implications to improve my communications and others around me by basically going back to everything I said. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of um, implications to that because it's not just, well, of course it is just talking and stuff, but it's more about being coherent, making sure you're sure you're uh, empathetic with them, listening to all that type of thing because the range of disabilities is very wide, it's a very large spectrum and not everybody's the same. It's just like, that's why I say they're just like us because not all of us are the same. They might have a little bit more differences, but at the end, nobody's the same, you know, we gotta, you know, try and like listen and be more attentive and more caring and empathetic with people just all around. And again, going back to the growing population of it, I do think that more people should be aware of that. Okay, so basically what I was talking about today, I'm gonna go ahead and just about all that, is what I did, which is basically sat down, had group discussions, heard, listened to them, tried to give them advice, you know, make sure I gave them the time to talk and all of this. We did charades, like all types of games, beanbag sauce, we call hacky sack, so fun. Man, we did a lot of drawing, hangman too, they like hangman, <laughs> and stuff like that. And a lot of like to draw, they're very artistic people. So that's basically what I did, all the activities we did. Um, we also did walk arounds too. If y'all don't know, if y'all know where Chanel is, uh, Chanel Park Road, that's what we still do. We do little walk arounds up and down there, stuff like that. And, that's it. So back to what I was trying to say about my clincher. So we all need, everybody needs love and grace, love and appreciation. And I think it is truly up to us to make sure that you know, that gets to everyone. So that's the end. Thank you.